What's everybody doing? Hmm? All right, what's everybody doing? It's a Friday, uh, 7 o'clock sharp, Pacific Standard Time, so I'm going to go ahead and just go into this. Um, first thing I wanted to say, so what's going on? So much going on in the world. So much going on in the world. Um, we definitely know there's so much going on. So a couple things. Uh, Last week, I talked about starting a new series, so we would do, um, where I would basically uh, speak on three subjects, or uh, something that's going on um, biblically, um, with the news, or um, based on comments. I hadn't seen any comments, there was no questions out to me um, for this week, and next week, or actually until next, just until next Friday. Um, I want you have to email me if you'd like a prayer because at this point uh, I'm unable to get a um, receive your phone call, um, so I can do via email. But then next Friday we would go back into the phone um, that will be on until midnight Pacific Standard Time. If you need a prayer, um, because all praises to the Most High, I definitely you know want to help. Um, if that needs to happen, where you need, you definitely need, um, you're looking for encouragement and you need a prayer, so I can do that for you. Um, and uh, it's usually sisters and I will pray over families, single parents with children. Um, it's not usually males, but um, I'm not saying I've never spoke to brethren about anything. I have, um, but in this case, I just definitely want to. Um, really focus in, on single parenting and um, folks that, you know, need need that extra encouragement when they're going through like, those sort of things that are happening. So um, then I was talking about how uh, last week, two things, Revelation, okay, Revelation, um, because we don't know, thief in the night, our Messiah will, will come as a thief in the night. However, please turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, let's start there, Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to read this again. Like I said, a sister helped me remember. You know, because many, many saints, churches, I always like to say, you never know, so it won't be today or whatever. They're misguiding the flock in not saying to watch. And we are watchers and we're teachers and, and um, there's those that, you know, of the elect that, are definitely trying to um, warn those of the things that are taking place. So, Revelation chapter 3 says, And to the angels in the church in uh, Sardis write, Now I am looking at my new King James. I can also go by the, the other, the first King James, um, which I might do a reference to that too as well, um, to the scripture. It's, it may have a couple different words, so I may go ahead and, and grab that too here. So, let me read it off this one first. These things says, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. So look at the things that are ready to die. One of the things I can say that's ready to die is how they're trying to transform generations into this new whole way of living, new order of things. Um, in the technology, so forth, right? We, we know that. Um, that is a dead thing. When you think about it, the dark matter, it's a dead thing. Trying to come to life. As opposed to dying to this world, dying to the flesh, and living for the living God, Yahweh, the Most High, and His Son, Yeshua. Jesus the Christ. So, as Abba, our Father, okay, and Melech in Hebrew, the King, King of all kings, who is Jesus, Yeshua, we die to the flesh for that, to pick up and follow Him. But when you're already in a dead state and you're trying to take the world over, as Satan has been working into, um, it's dead. That's why this area in Revelation 3 is talking about the dead church. It's dead. There is 
There's no wavering. There's no way to dispute that. It is dead. It's a dead situation. Right now, the way life is headed is a dead situation. The only way to live and to understand that alive process is to follow the Father that is alive, the living, the living God. So, okay, verse 2 again says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. I have not found your works perfect before God. So you notice, um, you see a lot of people saying they're illuminated, they're transferring into that, that light. See, that's the negative darkness. It's not the light of truth. Light of truth is Holy Spirit, not seeing just spirit. See, that's the negative. That's the darkness. That's evil. Evil. So when they're saying they're becoming alive and illuminated, live backwards is evil. Evil. They're evolving evil into the light because the light is only shining above them. That's Satan who was Lucifer at that time. And they're trying to shine forth on the world. Their one little eyeball, a little circle to capture everything, to captivate it. That is not dying to the flesh. That's living for the flesh. It's trying to ignite it. It's trying to bring about something. Change is one thing. Science is one thing. But when we start um, conforming to a, a Mark system or a beast system, then that's the beast realm, which I did a video on. Okay, so, and all praise the Most High Father, can you uh, please send your Holy Spirit over this video and over this time? Um, just to make sure that we are all in one bond union with this and that we're in agreement. If you have a question, you have a disagreement, definitely go to the Holy Word first. Pray over it. As I mentioned to brethren just a few days back, um, since so many out there, there's so many falseness and false teaching and false profiting and not saying Christ's bride or the elect, or, you know, the saints are false. I'm saying the ones that, that we definitely know are not coming from a true place. And they're not really using the Holy Word at all. So you test the Spirit. You're always testing to see that it's true. So that's why I asked for His Holy Spirit. Excuse me, I usually have my head all covered. But right now I am covering the top so that you understand because I am in the Scriptures. And I am in the, um, the Holy Word and, and, and asking for Holy Spirit on this. So because I'm saying that, I have the top of my head covered. Period. Okay, so... Um, and I'm speaking to whoever may see this video, whether it's one person who views it, or a hundred, or five, doesn't matter. It's that bearing witness, seeing what's happening. So, to that extent, I have this part of my head covered. I need to at least have some of it. Okay, so, get that back in there. This is not a hair tutorial. <laughs> this is not a hair tutorial. Do not get... Uh, confused on it. This is not one of those, you know, hair tutorials where we're doing all that. I'm just making sure it's covered at the moment until I go into an, maybe if I go into another subject or a video that has to do with uh, health or something else that's not of scriptural background um, to fortify you, whether it be health or nutrition, something like that. But at this moment, because I'm speaking the truth, I want to definitely make sure that that's like that. So, it says, remember therefore, in verse 3, Revelation 3, 3, remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, therefore, if you will not watch. If you won't watch, it's the dead, if they won't watch, can't force anyone, right? Our Heavenly Father gives us free will to make a choice. He chooses us, however many have been called but do not want to receive it. So, Okay, not watching. It says, I will come upon you as a thief. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardius, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And that's talking about the 144,000. Um, also made clean. 144,000 tribes, tongues, nations, 12 tribes of Israel as well. So 
that's what I wanted to mention there. Now verse 5 goes in to say, And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now that's just, that's, that's chapter 3, okay? That's chapter 3. Just take a moment. Just take a moment. Think about that. What that means. Just take a moment and to think about what that really means. Okay, so basically what it is saying is that if you are not watching, so this isn't the scripture says um, you don't uh, that we don't know the day or the hour. This is saying if you do not watch, you will come as a thief. Because if you're not watching and you're sitting there focusing on science, you're fo okay, I'm not saying you're not able to go to a class. I'm not saying not to work, none of that. Okay, I know what my life is. I know what I have asked the Most High, so this is between him and I. For someone who is working, for someone who is in that kind of situation or they're trying to, uh, they're in a lucrative position, it's not about the money. The money won't get you anywhere, not, in this, not only for this world, not the new kingdom, but what we say is, what the scripture is saying I am having a tussle with this tonight, huh? Should have just covered my whole hair like usual. What the scripture is saying is that if you're not watching, if you are not watching, then it will come to you as a thief. And then it will be too late and there's no way to repent and there's no way to go back. And that's just the situation. There's nothing you can do from there. Okay. Let me see. So, a couple things. And also because uh, I did not see a com uh, comments or any questions, still something new. I didn't go live, but it is seven o'clock, like I said. So seven o'clock. Um, so you could, you'll be able to view this in a little while, and then there'll be a couple other subject videos to follow. Okay. Um, there's numerous scriptures that have been looked up talking about um, where this world is headed, how um, angels have gone, the sons of sons of uh, our father went to sons of men and ended up having children with women. And they beautified and glorified them, they said. And you can look at that in the book of Enoch. Um, talks about before creation and, and during creation. Everything that was taking place at that time, those sons of darkness had decided to go and not listen. Now there's Jude. I'll turn over to Jude for a moment. And Jude is right before Revelation. Um, keep that in mind there. Keep that there. I have 2 Peter 2 4, Matthew 24 22, Matthew 24 37. These, these are not scriptures I'm going into right now. These are scriptures I'm going to mention to you so that you understand. Um, you can look them up. We will go into them through the time. But right now, I, at this moment in the beginning, I want to express this. So. Something to put on your mind so you can think about it. It's really important to put a thought in your mind that is true from the Holy Word and meditate on it. You need to meditate on the scriptures. You need, um, I have to meditate on them. The Apocrypha, which I'm also going to read out of. The Apocrypha, I have to read out of it. I have to meditate and I have to have time. That's why Sabbat, tomorrow on my Sabbat, early morning I'll be reading. And I'll, that'll be that time to meditate. It's nice to take a long walk or uh, get out in nature on Friday somehow, some way, with your schedule. And then um, be able to fortify yourself with nature, understanding um, how our Father created the, the earth for us and the birds and, and the trees and the flowers and all those things that we enjoy so much. Okay, and then you have Sabbath, and you can go over the um, material you've written about, and you can look and see what you have written down, and you can meditate on it. Okay? It says, meditate on his word day and night. The living bread, the eternal water. Water purifies us. It can also be something bad, but we're not talking about that. We're not talking about um, these false gods and things and all that are going into the underworld. What I'm, what I'm trying to express to you is, you have to meditate on it. Well, with knowing the truth that sets you free, you also have to understand where the negative comes from, the evil. Because if you don't understand that, you don't understand how real it is and where we are in time. You have to understand the Mark system, the beast system that way. You have to understand it. Okay? So Genesis 7-5, I have a Revelation 3-21. 
So Revelation 18.4, Revelation 3.10, Revelation 18.8. Um, let's see, I have Genesis 6, 5 through 8, and Genesis 6, 6 through 7, and I'm just, I think there's a couple more. Um, so let's do this. Let's go back. If you have Jude, okay, that's right before Revelation. And I'm sure you all know that because most of you are Christ's bride. And uh, for others, this is just for someone who, you know, who is not feeling lost. But I'm saying they're not quite sure about anything. There's so much going on in the world. So take a moment. And you can follow with me if you'd like. Just encouragement, okay? So, and I'm sorry, you guys. I'm a little bit, I'm telling you, I had a week. Um, and, I, and I know many brethren are, are wearing down, wearing out. It's not that anyone is giving up. Um, it gets redundant at times where the Most High is telling you what to say. He's telling you how to find those lost sheep. He's directing your path. You've chose to walk in His ways and you still, it's like there's some just glued to their phone. Now, this isn't my phone. These are just earphones. I'm just saying they're just glued. I have no idea what's going on in the world. They're looking at their iPad or their smartphone and their new watch he probably has a, the mark of the beast some kind of chip in it there's chips everywhere right we don't want to take that ultimate chip to buy ourselves like, do you understand what I'm saying so much out there you have to be balanced you have to keep your mind clear constantly reinforcing and also allowing the Holy Spirit and I'm, I'm not going to ever stop saying this because this is what it is the most high poured out Holy Spirit upon flesh for, for us to receive Holy Spirit to understand it at that same time, we have to repent. We have to keep keep on working through this and, and exercising faith, sword of faith, constantly the sword of faith. And I keep saying that, putting on a new the suit of armor, putting on the new um, new man, as it would be in the Holy Word, putting on that that um, letting the Spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit, the holiness of the Most High, letting that sink in and and. Um, really joyfully understand what that means for you. Because it's a sacrifice. If you think it's not a sacrifice, it's a sacrifice to um, follow follow and be as Christ-like as you can. It's a sacrifice. Some would argue with me. I, I'm going to tell you from personal experience, it is a sacrifice. Time spent. Time spent. Constantly. And... and for someone else just going out there doing whatever, just hanging out all the time, party, 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 all that stuff, you know, drinking, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, you know, I don't need that. I don't need a cigarette. I don't need a drink. I don't need none of it. Okay? Not everyone um, sees that as something bad. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that you cannot have a drink in moderation. But for myself, it's not something I need. I just don't need that. That's not something I even need at this point. Have I ever had a drink? Yes. In the past, not name I don't need it. It's not necessary. Um, and when I say drink, there's so much. When we talk about drink, we talk about... See, I'm getting into another part. I keep going on and on. So give me a second and then we'll go there about the cup of wrath. And we'll talk about um, the innocent blood being shed. Okay? And the child and the dragon. Okay? And the woman giving birth. Okay? Because we understand with uh, this... This time passing, there's been a lot of interesting things with the, the sky, what I saw on the moon last week, right when it was around the pagan Mother's Day, okay? And black was going over the moon, okay? And it was red. It, it was a, I'll say it was a, a yellowish, or not even yellow, orange. Like an orange, almost like a mandarin orange or blood. It wasn't a blood moon, nothing like that. We know the blood moon hasn't even come yet. That was, um, it would have been in... March, April, March, and then one in September, okay? But what I'm saying is seeing different things take place, and I, I truly feel and felt at that point that there's innocent blood being shed, abortions being performed, women not caring, and for the women that don't, that make that choice to abort, shedding innocent blood, that is the, that is the father's child that you put in, in your body. A seed. We don't know what seed that would have been. We don't know who that would have been. No one thinks about that because they want to go play. You know, not be married. They want to play. 
They don't want to pay. They just want to pay some money and have it taken away. It's an innocent, innocent embryo. No matter how it's looked at, it is. Okay? Jude. Maintain your life with God. Okay, verse 20 in Jude. I'm, I'm going to go all over this, though. Jude, verse 20. There's no chapter 1. It's just verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your spirit, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. Even hating the garments that are defiled by flesh. All right, let's move up to Juju. -ju. Okay, I'm, I'll wait to do this on another video. So let's let's go to verse 12 of Jude. These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear. Now this is t after we've talked about um, apostasy that is in Sodom and Gomorrah days, in the time where um, they weren't taking Moses seriously. These are two different accounts. So one was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, the Most High was fed up. Now. Okay, so for someone who doesn't believe in the word at all, they could argue, okay, that happened then, it's not going to happen now. If it happened once, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen again because it says it's going to happen. Now, um, this is after we're talking about how Michael, the archangel, and um, the devil, Satan the devil, were contending because there was a dispute about the body of Moses. And dare not bring in against him a reviling accusation, saying, The Lord will rebuke you. You see, Satan wanted to speak evil um, and contend on where Moses' body was. Now, first of all, that's not something that, that should even be discussed with him. So, Michael the Archangel is like, The Lord will rebuke you. Watch your mouth. See, many people think that. There's not a constant asking, can I do this, can I do this, yes. See, when it says that Satan was cast out of, he out of heaven, okay, it didn't mean all the way yet. This is where a lot of people, you know, they listen to some preachers who are telling you, oh, he's cast out, he's, no. See, even when he had to, even when he was walking about the earth, and most of us says, where were you, what were you doing? He says, I was walking about the earth, looking to who I could, you know, devour, who I could bother and it was Job. It was bothering Job. If you also look at the book of Enoch, it will also express to you um, he still has to, you know, may I do this? Because see, the Most High protects his people. He protects them and he sends angels in those times when we need them. You know, the Holy Spirit is real. The angels are real. The protection is real. It's there. So, this is something that was going on. And, that, and we could go on and on about that, honestly. That that goes a long way. You know, if your son or daughter are light and you're really looking to understand more of how all of this happened right before creation, it, it's amazing to, to understand how things are actually happening, how heaven plays, um, where heaven is when it comes to heaven. Okay, and understanding the beast being locked up. Okay, so there's just so much that. So that took me into verse 12. I'm going to just go ahead and read verse 12 so you kind of have an interlude to what's going on. Verse 12 of Jude says, These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, this is verse 14, now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. He prophesied about these men, also saying, see, that's the book of Enoch. 
has been withheld until it came out. See, it was withheld. Do you realize how much there are so many saints now, there's so many lost sheep that would understand more if they really put that time in to understand that. Look at the book. Understand why. You know, we're talking about Enoch. The seventh from Adam in Jude. It's not in Genesis. It's in Jude. Really think about that. Meditate upon that word. Okay. Sorry about my webcam. Okay, so it says, he was prophes prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute, this verse 15, to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungod ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, I'm going to explain, if you, if you can get this, if you're understanding the mysteries, then understand this. I'm just going to say it for some that may not. If someone sees this, they don't understand. Okay. Enoch, seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. He said, they're ungodly. They're committing ungodly ways, ungodly deeds. And what are they doing? Reserved for the blackness of darkness forever. Raging waves of the seas tells you if you come from down below. Now, if they're doing ungodly things, so think about how in the how could they um, describe if they're ungodly and their deeds are ungodly, how can they manage to let anyone else know what they're what they're about? And know the mystery, know the mysteries, and understand certain things like science and technology. Science then, at that time, science, and those things hadn't even transpired yet. As they would say, astrology or things of the sky. Um, and see, I'm exposing here. I'm going to expose it this way. Biblically, I'm just going to expose it. So, see, the wicked spirits are real. They go to people. They're able to express things to them. And then, in turn, they do ungodly deeds. So if you understand how ungodliness works, if you understand how the wicked realm works, if you understand how things advance the way they do, they're not blessed by the Most High because He is Almighty. He is everything. He made creation, heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon. But if man, saying that they're God, saying, I can do this, I can do this, actually, it's counterfeit. They're not even doing it. They got it from some wickedness, you see, because in the book of Enoch, it even talks about that, about the sons of darkness, the sons of man that came down, they were sons of man. At one time, see, they would have been angels, and then they did wrong. We're not talking about just the fallen angels. We're talking about um, ones that wanted to, to be like him, following Satan. And um, because of that, they corrupted and went into the minds of people who wanted to just keep delving, delving. As they would say, it's the light. It's not the light. It's not knowledge. It's, it is education. Yes, education. Science is education. Mathematics, mathematics is uh, education. But the education is not perceived to make everyone better off. It to, turns to destruction. It's to the evilness of man. It's, it's to puffing themselves up, just like the Roman leaders did, just like the Roman Empire, just like um, um, time of uh, everything that we've learned with art and everything. I don't want to go too far into that because that will take me into a whole bunch of humanities and things. So let's just stick to the Holy Word. Okay, so um, the deeds. And think about the word deeds. Deeds. When you spell out deeds, it's spelled the same way, the other way. Okay, so what I mean is deed, D-E-E-D. I'm going to write this out. I, I know everyone is able to get this. And they're saying, I already understand, but I just want to write it. So when you write it and you, you understand it and everything, it kind of makes you be able to think clearer about so much. So I have D E. E, 
D F P. Now if we take off the S, deed. And if you spell it backwards, it's reversed. It's deed. But how about this? Their ungodly deed leads to this. Bad. And I'm going to say bad. There's two D's in here. I'm just going to say bad because it's ungodly. So it's not good. It's obviously evil and bad. What about this with the S? Seeds. <gasps> Whoa. I have to do that because it just, sometimes it's like I go, you know, I look at a word and I just, okay. So maybe that's not what it's supposed to mean. It's a deed, title to your car, deed to your, to, to something. Okay. But if we want to get really technical in the, in the holy word and understand, it's that simplistic. Bad seeds. Their ungodly deeds are bad seeds. If you plant a bad seed, will your crop grow? No. Whatever you want to reap, whatever harvest you're trying to grow, whatever you want to happen from that foundation of, of planting the soil, watering the soil, watching it grow, it's going to be that seed that you planted. It's a bad seed they're planting. They didn't plant a good seed. They just didn't plant a good seed. I have to understand that myself. So I'm, I'm speaking this information to myself so it stays in my mind, it stays in my heart, it all works together in its discernment. Love for thy neighbor, love for the Most High and respect. I have to respect myself. What I mean by that is I am not everything. I cannot do any of this without the Most High's blessing. As my father Abba, as he directs me, at the same time, that I'm making this video. It's encouraging myself because I am sitting here in front of the camera. You are viewing it and I have to understand what I'm saying. I have to be able to express it, explain it like you do in a speech, dissertation, or you do in a workshop or you're on stage speaking to a whole bunch of people about, let's say someone's talking about some scientific thing. They have to express it, right? Well, I'm expressing what I'm learning because I have to meditate upon this word. And then I have to know that it's inspired for reproving, Correcting, setting things straight. It's critical thinking all the time. Okay? They teach you that in college, right? But when it comes to the Holy Word, you learn so much faster when you're in the Word. You learn so much faster. You understand so much more of the simplicity, and then it turns into the wisdom of the Word. The Word is the wisdom. It is the solid food. It is the glue that sticks everything together. Okay? It just is. And many will argue with that. They will argue with that. You know, it's come to a point where, and I'm sure some of you could agree on this, it's, it's getting to that point where you're just, you're not laughing, but some of which um, is being said in speeches. Okay, you see leaders, I don't even want to do any, say anything about that anymore. I've, I've said it, I'm, I'm done with it right now. I just, not, not the word for today, but leaders. Okay, politicians, you've got leaders of companies, you've got bankers, you've got royals, you've got elites, <sighs> you've got it all. When they start saying, I'm a globalist, when they start saying, um, the people need to have a job, the people we want to keep making sure we're speeding everything up, these are key words that you need to be mindful of. Keeping your mind open to understanding times are now. They're changing rapidly. They're changing, and you're being warned. And the Most High sees it, and, and the Holy Spirit's bearing witness of it. You see it. You, you see someone speaking. You can tune in. You understand it. Let's not be negligent. Let's be efficient. Let's be productive in His work. I, myself, have to be encouraging to others, and others are encouraging to me. That's brethren, that's closeness, that's family, that's the bride, that's one bond. And as you walk in this walk of seeing things for what they are, it looks faker and faker 
and faker and slower so you can just almost go off the screen into nothingness and that's the blinding that's happening that's the clouded mind the mind control that the control of just making you think that oh everything is woo breezy air and everything's beautiful everybody have a picnic i mean we do love picnics don't we we all like to eat but i'm saying oh it's so beautiful let's just you know let's just uh make everybody forget what they're learning oh let's just not even let them learn let's just have them be full of nothing but core values i don't know let's just let's just keep them in the dark let's just keep their minds occupied with who they want to text and who they want to put on Twitter. You know, should I stop talking like this and change my voice? Or talk like, you know, mm. see, what I'm trying to express to you are the characters and the ones playing the game and how things shift all the time. And I mean shift because the person you think is helping is not helping you. These, these people that are trying to lead, not just United States of America, people that are leading, that are leading other um, establishments, people that are leading other banks, people that are leading corporate offices, people that are leading all this, are not trying to keep you alert to living your life the best way you can, whole-souled and honest. It's about leave this, and I may speak to you in this manner, I may speak to you in that manner. I mean, what is that with the interpretations of... Someone's, this is my angry interpreter, really? See, that's that mind stuff that goes on, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you're not seeing. As a viewer, an audience member, watching someone give a speech, talking about all kinds of things, whether it be the Constitution, whether it be um, rights, civil rights, whether it be... Um, Equality, all of it though, you have to pay attention to words, to be, pay attention to what's being spoken. Just, it's just where we're at. So, I mean, the beast realm is just this nasty. It's self serving. It's sad. It's sad. And yet we. We have to stay and we have to we have to educate and live our lives. We have to educate others um, who want to understand the listening ear and want to um, show the most high respect, see, and walk as our Messiah did. There is a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. I will say prayer. You have to pray. 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 Um, excuse me. Prayer and supplication. That's that armor. Many people say, oh, I need to armor myself with some machinery. I know. I don't even want to get into that. All I'll say about that is see how it works for you. Because then you've committed one of the Ten Commandments. Protecting yourself is one thing. Protecting your family, your home. It's another thing to have to just start using armory to uh, make your point. My only armor is the sword of faith. That's the way it has to be. Jesus is the one that's going to be save. He'll be here to get his bride. He'll be here. He'll be here. I'm not talking about anyone trying to be um, a fake messiah, antichrist, anything like that. When he comes, he's going to come. You'll know. You'll know. You see, because you're going to go by Revelation chapter 3, where it says, if you are not watching, then obviously you won't see him coming. He'll be a thief. But if you are watching, he won't be a thief because your eyes are going to be alert. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be watching. Okay, so enough with Jude. I have to say enough because otherwise I can go on and on and on and on and on on that same subject. Okay, so you talk about deeds and bad seeds, ungodly men, false men. Oh, boy. See, Yahweh and Yeshua of Nazareth, so Jesus the Christ, okay, he is the word, the light of Holy Spirit. He's, he's, he's the truth. He's the way. And um, there is no other way. 
He was teaching about his father's kingdom, the gospel. Period. Point. To the point. Case in point, that's it. There's no other way around that. Um, many try to go to salvation, say there's many ways to heaven, many ways to God. No, there isn't. It's not yoga. <laughs> okay, it's not false gods. It's not silver and gold. Not any of that. <laughs> None of it will get you into the kingdom of heaven. You know, I was reading last night. Um, I find that too. I was reading this last night. And I just, I wasn't chuckling because it was funny. But we're at this point where we're like, wow, either wake up or stay asleep. Um, about a rich man. Because, you know, so many people say, oh, I believe that. Just like, you know, there's the Calvinists, there's Lutherans, uh, Luther, where, okay, he said, oh, I cannot get salvation, so I have grace. Okay, that, when it says grace in the Holy Word, what it's talking about is we are imperfect. So that grace is because we have been sinners, we've been imperfect. It doesn't mean keep sinning all the time. It doesn't mean try to sin. You try to kill the flesh every day. You're, you're dying to the you're dying to the flesh, and you have to then be made re, may, be made renewed, renewed. So then, and then there's the callous saying, "Oh well, you know." Um, let's see, I, have, I don't want to mix this up now. So, because I was learning about this today. So, um, the two thoughts of one: uh, people thinking that if they're just rich and so forth, that they do good deeds, that's going to get them to heaven. No. See, good good deeds. We're not talking about ungodly. Good deeds. That's the secular, that's the secularism. That's like a classism. Notice ism, I-S-M, classism. Secularism. Because they believe if they do homage, okay, or they pay homage, or they, uh, somebody does, uh, feeds the poor once a year, or... Um, see, these things should, how should I say, it? being respectful should should be there. Being respectful, caring for your neighbors, loving and being tactful if they wake up. Um, part of those commandments are already instilled in you when you die to the flesh. So you don't have to go on Sunday, Easter Sunday, and then take someone's flowers on May 1st, because that's all pagan. So you already know about this if you're in the light. If you're a daughter or son of the light, you already know. So, but then there are those who think, oh, because I took care of my cousins and I did it this way, you know, and I went by, excuse my royal family, I went by um, the Roman way of doing things. Well, let me explain this. It doesn't matter. Because honestly, having money is not the way to the kingdom. That's the way to your kingdom. I mean, it's not saying you can't have a little money. What I'm saying is that being rich and just thinking about only being rich will never be anything that will get you in there because it's very hard for a rich man to. And then it pretty much definitely tells you mm, if that's what you're, you're involved in, that's a tough one. Reason why. So let's look at this scripture. Let's see, and I just had it um, last night. So give me just a moment. If you need tea or water, you want to take a little break, put me on pause. <laughs> if this isn't live, go right ahead. I mean, it's live right now, but when you, if you view it, uh, it won't be live, but you will have been able to pause. So you you know that. I don't have to tell you something like that. But, you know, if you want to get some water or something, I do that a lot with you guys. So, okay. See, and it's just like that. As soon as you have read a scripture... When you're in, you start reading, okay? You start reading, you start underlining, you start getting into that scripture. You really get into that scripture. Oh, I'm way off. I am so sorry. I'm so, I apologize. Hope you guys can forgive me on this one. I am way off. Let me get back to Matthew. I am way off here. Wow. And then again, I may not be able to find it just like that. But anyway, I know, I know what it says. <sighs> da, da, da. Let's see. I was um, 
reading different passages and scriptures and in, in, uh, to others last night and to children. So it was it was something very important. So I'm gonna say the gist of it. Now I'm gonna find it. Okay, but uh, as the scripture was saying, that it is easier for someone to for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, a little tiny needle that you sew with. I mean, we're talking about a needle. We're talking about like this, a little dot, you know, like a little, you know, little tiny, look at this. Let's see, where's the camera? A little dot, you know, little eye and a needle. Then for a rich man, for one, he's really focused on his riches, isn't he? So you're focused on all those riches. How can you really be thinking about the Most High, thinking about um walking as Jesus did, as Christ did, and telling others about his word. How could you? When you're, I mean, we're not saying don't make money, but I'm, what I'm saying to you is, is we all have to live at this time. What I'm saying is that if you think that you can get there, you're not going to get there by doing that. It's just, it's not going to happen because that's not the way it is. So I may add this one to the uh, next video. Because at this very second, it has completely lost my mind. But you understand that. And you can easily look it up as well. But it, I was reading this last night. I was just thinking, wow, you know. Some people think that if you don't have any money, I mean, there was a whole doctrine about that. If you don't have any money or you're, you know, you're relying on the most high or whatever, you must not be somebody good because you, you aren't a millionaire. Not a million won't get you. I mean... In the end, look, if you if you are a believer of being caught up in the clouds or how should I say I don't usually always use the word rapture because it's not in the word like that where it just says rapture. There may be some Bibles that say that. Some holy words I'd rather say holy words than Bible, Babel as they and when I say that is Babylonian meaning not just Catholicism, but uh the time where King James, in order for him to write this holy word, see, he wasn't, it, it, he was able to do it. Many weren't in agreement at first, and there's a lot that wasn't put in here, like in the Apocrypha, which I'm going to read from. But what I'm, what I'm expressing to you is that <sighs> there was a trend, there was doctrines, there were doctrines, there were. Um, Ways in which priests at that time and those in higher power leaders and so forth like to say this is the only way to think or this is the only thing. You know, this is the only way. Christianity, you know. Be Christian. Be Christ-like. But not, you know, it says act as Christian. It doesn't say anything about Christianity. Christendom. Many confusions on that, right? So, going by the Holy Word, you don't need to um, assemble. I mean, you want a fellowship, but what I'm saying is you don't need to assemble um, in, in a constant church, temple. Um, there's only those seven churches, and this is the seven parts of the churches that Jesus Christ was, was teaching, okay? is Excuse me, I'm getting allergies a little bit. Um, it's kind of cold and then hot, going back and forth, side the fan and the heat, fan heat, here in this uh, location. So, um, but what what I am expressing here is that there was never anywhere in the Holy Word, in the Holy Writings, in the Torah, and the you know, there was never any talk of let's just build churches everywhere and let's. Worship a person, one person of a congregation, and let's, you know, how take all the money and the tithing and all that's not in the Holy Word. It's just not. Been there, done that in these videos. So, I'm not going into that either. You can look at my other videos to understand that. Um, but it's the truth, right, brethren? It's the truth. It's just the truth. The truth sets you free once you, once you understand that if you do. To your 99.9999999 percent ability to live in the light and live as Christ did and, and follow Him and, and live the way um, we are, 
to worship in the way we follow the Most High and we praise Him and we love Him and we respect Him and we do His will and, and we bring about uh, change and we find the lost sheep and we direct them to His Word and everything. As we do that, you will understand that it will not make anyone rich. Let's see what time it is? Okay. So it will not make anyone rich. It just won't. Why won't it make anyone rich? It won't. Because there's no holiday. If you're not celebrating all those pagan holidays, if you are seeking um, the right righteousness and the statutes and laws and the Holy Word, and if you are practicing what you're preaching, what you're teaching others to observe, when you are not taking part in any of that, there's no money to be made. So then what? The advertising doesn't matter if I see it on here. It doesn't matter if I see it on the internet. It doesn't matter. It's not getting to me. But you have to have that, you have to have um, you have to build up your faith for the flesh of that, the, the lust of your eyes, the lust of wanting everything. You have to build up yourself in a spiritual light to not want everything you see. It can be tempting. Now recently um, I realized dark chocolate was okay, but I realized that most of and I I like I love honey. Okay, I like um, raw sugar. Once in a while, you know, you crave, you do crave. You crave a donut, you, you crave hot chocolate, or you crave s'mores, something like that. You might, you know, you might crave truffles. You might crave seized candy. You might crave um, something from the island, you know, a, a certain type of coconut, the, you know, chocolate and coconut, the bars or something. Some of that's okay, but for myself, recently I realized that I couldn't eat too much of, you know, like, you know, we know the processed sugar, you know what I mean? They add a whole bunch of salt to it, the sodium, the glucose, all that, or um, trans fat. So that wasn't working. So I realized I had more energy, needing to get some omega, some more tuna fish, a little fish. I don't do the shellfish, as I've said before, meaning the shrimp or the lobster, the crab, and I used to love it. No pork either. Because it's unclean in the Holy Word. Why? The demons, after uh, Yeshua, after Jesus rebuked those demons to flee from that man, what did they do? Can we run over to the pigs? Let's be in the pigs. So, yeah, I used to love roasted pig or, you know, come on, they have luau's or um, pork chops, some fried pork chops, potato, you know, steak, pork pork with the, you know, the bacon with the steak, steak and the bacon around it, all that yum, but no, not no more, it's not, not for me, I feel really sick, and I even, again, you can tune into that, I felt sick after eating the last situation of somebody feeding me a little, people will sneak it in when you say no, when you say no, you tell the devil to flee, and you say no, he will, he'll try to do anything to get into your, to your, your ways to do right. He'll try. He'll try to sneak it in any way. you got to constantly be praying. I'm so sorry, Father, for, you know, didn't mean to do that. That's not something I'm, you know, constant. You get better and better with your life. But right now, right now it is definitely, I see, a tiring. I mean, there have been other brethren making videos. You know, they're telling you, wake up, and we've seen some visions. I don't go into too many visions. I've, I've had my own, okay? I have. Um, not many, but very profound. I think I shared one once about the dish in my house. <laughs> Someone tried to take or so that was it was an interesting thing and I, I did some talked about that on one. Um, or just even actually recently, the last couple of days there was <sighs> constant clock ticking and ticking and we don't even have to go by time because why our Heavenly Father isn't in seasons. He doesn't go by seasons and all that, like they like to tell you that fall, spring, summer, winter. We're actually an Enoch calendar now, so. Okay, so, however, my point is, it was a ticking and talking, talk, 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 tick, 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 tick. There was a song, song that a group made, in Vogue made a group, a group 
playing the boat made a song. Tick, tick, tick. Talk, talk, talk. Tick, tick, tick. Time running on and on. It never changes. It goes in a circle over and over. And I was thinking about that. So that might have been part of what I was thinking. So I don't want to speculate on where that came from. All I'm saying is that I fell asleep and it was just like tick, tick, tick. I just kept hearing it ticking, ticking really loud. It's all clock, just really ticking. So I know that the time is soon. I know that the, the time is running out. Oh, you know, I was, I was wanting to, to leave a few months back. So I would say is just keep on searching, reading, meditating on the word. You have to have this. You have to have the holy word to keep going. And then you have to understand the scriptures in your heart and be able to hear them when you don't have your holy word because you never know what can happen. And you don't have that. You have to, you know, write down the word. I love you, Father. You know, thank you. All praise is just, you know, this is affecting me. Or this word means something. And learning more and more and more that you can. Translating what it means and everything. Looking it up, researching. Um, it's good to be analyzing um, the way of the world and, and enough to understand what the word is saying to you. And what you're getting from it. Um so with that being said, brothers, uh, sisters in Christ, and sons and daughters of light, um, I am going to, um, give me about, if you have tuned into this, if you do see this next time, it's, give me about 20 minutes to do something, and I need to drink some water and a little tea. Um, then I'll come back on, because there are some subjects I just wanted to finish up before I go into another area that the Most High has directed me into and what I need to next do. So um, I pray for all you brethren on YouTube and bringing these messages of light to brothers and sisters, brethren and um, the other tribes and also um, exposing. We have to expose and I know some people feel fear, they feel frightened. You know, I, I had my moments, believe me, I was tested with that wicked spirit. I'm going to tell you overall, our Heavenly Father won't let us go through what we cannot bear. And on top of that, if you keep searching and, ser and searching for truth, you'll find it. You have to expose it because our Heavenly Father tells us we have to. We have to. No matter how risky, we have to expose. We have to say, this is wrong. This is not the way. This is not the truth. This is not the light. This is not the way. We have to. We have to. And then you come back. And I'm sorry, too. I look at the screen here and, I, and I'm like, there's the light. So I'm always trying to be level with the uh, camera. But understand that, that that is the truth, okay? That's the truth. The truth shall set you free. You don't have a choice anymore. That's just what it has to be. Even if it's hard, it's a little risky, scary. I mean, we just, we all know that people are watching everything, right? But you have to keep trusting in Him. And you have to keep praying. And you have to keep asking for the, um, His Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you and for the angels to protect you and for you to rest well at night. So if you have any problems resting, keep saying, you know, most times, please, please help me rest. I won't go into my whole holy prayer, but that's what I'm saying. He's constantly saying, please watch over us. Please help us to be strong and determined. You know what I mean? Please help us to have that, that Hebrew way, you know, to fortifying our souls day and night. Incessant prayer, supplication to him. And those believers in Christ, sheep, Follow the Lamb. Abba is happy. Most High is happy. And so is Melech, the King. The Son of Him. Forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and log off. So like I said, like 20 minutes, okay? And then I'm going to be back on to talk about the Apocrypha. It's going to be um, the Wisdom of Solomon. If you happen to have this, you can get it online. Um, so... Look for that. And boy, am I having a... <laughs> I think I'll just wrap it up on this next one because I'll be reading from the Apocrypha.
Yeah, see, look at this. This is something. I was just doing this quick because I had to get online. See, someone say, oh, I don't look perfect. I cannot do that. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm, I'm going to be as real as I can with you. Showering, drinking water, purifying out that bad, filter, filtering out that bad, and uh, staying in the light. Let me tell you something. We're real. At some point, all of the best. All of us are going to be raised up to be as one union, one body in Christ. See, this is this is telling me it's time to get off for a minute, so I'm going to take a little break. Um, but one bond, one bond. We're all going to be doing what 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 He wants and worshiping Him. So, you know, not to be ashamed, not to feel. Ooh, I cannot fix that. Or, oh my goodness, my eye makeup's messed up. No, I don't even have any eye makeup on. This is this is it. And I'm not trying to. There's no no. Um, how should I say? It? No arrogance about it. No um, falsehood on the fact that I'm trying to fix this. As I am. No. Oh my goodness, I have to be perfect before I go. No. Clean in the eyes of the Most High. Repenting. Repent. Repentance. Respectful, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, repentful, yeah, like, you know, we want to make him happy and bring praises to him. Whole soul. So, being real, but, you know, obviously your hygiene matters. It matters to me, you know? So, doing that before you, you know, if you, if you can. Before you, you talk about the Heavenly Father in that way. And I even know that at that time when our Messiah was walking the earth, he said, wash your feet. If you're clean, just wash your feet. Now, we do more than that. We have a lot more going on. Whether you take the bus, you walk. There's dust. There's chemicals out. There's all this stuff in the air. So you have to be constantly filtering out that bad and taking care of yourself. But humble yourself before God. Humble yourself, humble yourself before the Lord. So... This is me. This is it. So, you know, sometimes you might have to go like this with if your nose itches or something, have the fan on. You know, so that's nothing vulgar, nothing disrespectful. But be real. There's a lot of people with false pretense. They're wearing all these three-piece suits and preaching to 10,000 people at a time. You don't even know the person in the fifth row, seventh row, twelfth row, hundredth row. They don't even know that person. How in the world could you shepherd the flock like that? That's not talking about having a workshop or speaking out amongst a lot of people. I'm saying on a regular basis, how can you call that a church? How can you call that the Most High's home? How can you say that that's his temple or that's his place of worship? The temple, people get that so mixed up and then they say, Oh, I want to I wanna, you know, listen to this, this prophecy, this person prophesy this and that. They don't ever tell you the truth about the last days. They don't ever tell you we are in the last moment. Period. Last moment. They don't want to tell you that. And if you're here through the tribulation and all the extra stuff that's going to go on, they don't want to tell you, hey, this is going to be rough. No, because some of them are paid off to keep that secret. Some of them are paid off to keep the peace about. Even Christians. Keep the peace. Don't talk about all the stuff going on all over the world. Don't talk about the beast. Don't talk about the things we're living in. We are. Don't talk about Christ's return like that. Well, I am. This is what it is. And many of us are. The truth shall set you and I free. That being said, I'll be back in about 20 minutes, okay? See you soon. Shalom.